the phospholipid bilayer membrane is said to be a semi-permeable membrane. And what that means is certain molecules which are permeable to the membrane are able to pass across the membrane without much difficulty. But other molecules which are impermeable to the cell membrane cannot pass across the cell membrane without the assistance of some type of protein molecule. Now inside our body, we have all these different types of molecules and the ability of these molecules to actually pass across the cell membrane varies over a wide range of values. So the question that I'd like to discuss in this lecture is, what exactly are the factors that determine the permeability of a given molecule? What determines the ability of a given molecule to actually pass across the cell membrane? So perhaps the most important factor is polarity. So what does that actually mean? Well, we know that the core, the inside of the phospholipid bilayer membrane is predominantly nonpolar. It is hydrophobic as a result of those hydrocarbon tails. And what that means is for a molecule to actually be able to pass across the cell membrane, it must be able to dissolve inside the core of that phospholipid bilayer. So that implies that the permeability of a molecule depends on its ability to actually dissolve in a nonpolar hydrophobic solution. So the more nonpolar a molecule is, the more likely it is to actually dissolve within the hydrophobic core environment of that phospholipid bilayer membrane. So what that means is, for a hydro, for a nonpolar molecule, for a small nonpolar molecule to actually pass across the cell membrane, it basically dissolves inside that cell membrane as it moves across that cell membrane. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, in diagram A, let's suppose we have a cross section of that phospholipid bilayer membrane and on both sides we have an aqueous environment. Now remember, in an aqueous environment, water molecules predominate. Those are the solvent molecules. And any other molecule present inside that solvent basically exists in the cage of water molecules and this is called a solvation shell. So let's suppose we have a small nonpolar molecule shown in purple and this nonpolar molecule exists in the cage in a solvation shell that is shown in this diagram. And before it actually makes its way into this nonpolar cell membrane, this nonpolar molecule must break free from this cage. So it basically bounces back and forth and eventually it makes its way out, eventually collides with this phospholipid bilayer membrane and it makes its way into this nonpolar region. So to enter that bilayer membrane, that nonpolar molecule must lose that solvation shell, the cage of water molecules around it. And once that happens, it enters that hydrophobic region of the core of that phospholipid bilayer membrane. And so now what begins to happen is we have these van der Waal interactions. So London dispersion forces which basically exist between the nonpolar molecule and the tails, the hydrocarbon tails of these phospholipids. So eventually it moves across and makes its way back out on the other side and once again that salvation shell, that cage of water molecules is basically reformed. Now this discussion basically leads to the next important point. If a molecule is polar or it has some type of charge, what that means is it will not be very likely to actually pass across the cell membrane. Why? Well, let's suppose this molecule has a charge. If this molecule here, shown in purple, actually has a charge, then that means these electrostatic interactions, which will be hydrogen bonds, will be very, very stabilizing. And that charged molecule will not want to lose those energetically favorable interactions and enter an environment in, in which it cannot form those same energetically stabilizing bonds. So a charged or a very polar molecule will not be able to dissolve and travel 
travel across the cell membrane because to do so that means it must lose these hydrogen bonds interactions between the water molecules and then enter an environment in which it cannot form those same stabilizing bonds. So we see that this also means that charged or very polar molecules do not readily pass across the membrane because such molecules, one, lose the strong inter in, uh, interactions with water that exist in that salvation shell, that cage of water molecules, and two, they cannot form those same stabilized interactions with the hydrocarbon tails found inside the core of that bilayer membrane. So we see that ions such as sodium ions, potassium ions, or chloride ions have a very low permeability. They cannot pass across that cell membrane as shown in the following diagram. So we have a potassium ion, let's say, found on the outside of that cell membrane, and this is the phospholipid bilayer, and notice that it exists in this cage, in this salvation shell in which we have all these hydrogen bonds shown in green. And so because these bonds, these uh, electric interactions are so stabilizing, it doesn't actually want to leave and break these bonds because if it dissolves inside the nonpolar region of that phospholipid bilayer, it will not be able to form those same energetically favorable interactions. So charged ions or molecule, uh, charged ions or molecules do not easily pass across the membrane because they do not want to lose those energetically favorable water uh, interactions that exist in that water cage. And to basically uh, describe what we mean, let's take a look at these two molecules. So these two molecules are structurally similar. So they have very similar structures. The only difference is at a pH of about seven, which is the physiological pH, this is, or this exists without a charge. While this tryptophan and amino acid exists in its zwitter ion form. So we'll have a full negative charge and a full positive charge. And because this actually contains full charges and this one doesn't, the indole is 1,000 times more likely to actually pass across that cell membrane and dissolve in that hydrophobic core section than that tryptophan amino acid. So we see that indole, an uncharged molecule that is structurally similar to the tryptophan amino acid crosses the membrane 1,000 times more likely or more quickly than the tryptophan in its zwitter ion form, which is the form that exists at the physiological pH of around 7. Now, so we can basically summarize the following result. We see that for a molecule to actually dissolve across that cell membrane, it must be able to interact in a stabilizing way with those tails, with the hydrocarbon tails of those phospholipid molecules. And so nonpolar molecules can dissolve across the membrane, but polar molecules cannot. Now, technically, that is not actually the entire story because we see water molecules are actually an exception to that rule. Water molecules can actually pass across the cell membrane. In fact, water molecules are one billion times more likely to actually pass across the cell membrane than potassium or, than potassium or sodium ions. Now, Water, as we know, is in fact a polar molecule. So we have a partial negative charge on the oxygen and partial positive charges on the hydrogen atoms. It is a polar molecule, yet somehow it's able to actually dissolve across and pass across that cell membrane. The question is why? Well, not only does the polarity determine the ability, the permeability of that molecule, but also the size and the concentration also determine its ability to actually pass across the cell membrane. So water molecules are actually relatively small molecules and they can squeeze across the cell membrane with ease. On top of that, if we discuss the polarity of the water molecule and we compare it to, let's say, the tryptophan or this potassium, the tryptophan and potassium actually have 
full charges and so they're much more polar than water. So because water does not actually have a full charge, it can pass across the cell membrane with ease. On top of that, we have many, many, many water molecules on the outside and inside of that bilayer membrane. And all these water molecules are continually colliding with the cell membrane. And because we have such a high number of water molecules, some of them are likely to actually pass across when they collide. So we see that water is the great exception to the rule above. Water molecules can cross bilayer membranes with relative ease, one billion times more likely than, than these ions or these ions. So now this is because they do not contain a full charge. There is a very high concentration of water outside and inside the cell and that means every time these collide there's a likelihood that they're going to actually pass across. And number three is they are relatively small. So for instance, if I compare let's say indole and water, the water is much more likely to actually pass across the cell membrane than indole because indole, even though it doesn't contain a full charge, indole is larger. We don't find indole in high concentrations and indole, when it collides, it cannot actually squeeze across that cell membrane because of its size and the fact that there are not too many collisions taking place between indole and the cell membrane in the first place. So three things that you have to consider to basically determine the permeability of a molecule across a cell membrane. So number one is, will it actually dissolve in that nonpolar core section of the phospholipid bilayer? So you have to look at the molecule's polarity. Number two is, you have to look at the size. Number three is, you have to look at the concentration of that molecule uh, outside or inside that particular phospholipid bilayer membrane.